Our next session is going to be focused on vaccines. Actually, uh, there is no gain saying that, you know, vaccines basically is absolutely necessary. But there is a lot of enigma surrounding vaccines. And, you know, we have uh, Dr. Shishang Zoshi and uh, Minakshi Dutta Ghosh, who will be joining us uh, on Zoom. It is a delight <clears throat> for me to basically introduce you to uh, all of you, uh, Minakshi Dutta Ghosh. She's an independent development professional. Minakshi Dutta Ghosh specializes at the interface of the government's governance, public health, and public policy. And she basically is known to walk the talk. An alumna of Pune University, Delhi University, and Harvard Kennedy School of Government, Mrs. Ghosh is the principal author of National Population Policy, India, principal author and national action plan for blood safety. Mrs. Ghosh was instrumental in introducing treatment for HIV and AIDS across India after having won for NACO, the Commonwealth Association Broadcasting Award for a most unique infotainment electronic and media campaign for sensitizing the vast millions on HIV AIDS. She's a former secretary, ministry, uh, Panchayati Raj, former special secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, the government, government of India. She writes on the impacts of the health-related policy on the ground, uh, ground level outcomes. Her most recent piece has appeared in September 2021 issue of the Alert Consumer on the changing role of Ayush practitioners in health and uh, wellness centers. And the other speaker, uh, the other participant in the panel is Dr. Shishang Zoshi. And this session is going to be moderated by Dr. Mukesh Mehra. May I invite Dr. Mukesh Mehra to the dais, please? Thank you. Morning, everyone. I think uh, we are going to have a very, very important and the practical aspect of COVID times. And the most important, and uh, it is vaccination is mandatory, yet enigma surrounding it prevails. Uh, as far as our eminent uh, uh, speaker, uh, eminent panelist, uh, uh, Dr. Shashank Joshi, actually doesn't require any introduction. We all are aware about his credential and his status. And uh, Mrs. Minakshi Dutta, uh, we are privileged to have her on our panel. So. Uh, so our top, topic is vaccination is mandatory, yet enigma surround it prevails. So we ha all have queries in mind regarding vaccination. We know we have uh, the worldwide endeavor to create a safe and effective COVID-19 vaccination now during fruits. And as far as Indian scenario is concerned, uh, till now we have vaccinated almost uh, 67 million, 67 crore and 72 lakhs Indians and almost 15.6% are uh, fully vaccinated. And total 11.4% of India is vaccinated. We are just uh, uh, second to China and we are ahead of uh, uh, USA also. We, we vaccinated is 37.4 uh, crores doses only. So what we have some questions. Uh, so I, I'll start with uh, uh, Dr. Sashang Joshi. Dr. Sashang, are you online? Dr. Sashang? Mrs. Datta is there online? Yeah. yeah. Good morning, Mrs. Datta. Welcome. Uh, uh. Thank you. Yeah. So should we start, ma'am? Are you uh, yes. are you ready? Yes, we can start. But I, but I'm I don't I I'm not seeing the full screen. Whereas I'm there, I don't know whether. Now we are we are able to hear you, ma'am. You can you can continue. Uh, you can. Uh, uh, you like to take some questions? Uh, should I start now, ma'am? Uh, please please start. 
So you have been actively associated almost every government policy we heard of in recent times which led to, to health matters, uh, whether mm -hmm. it is a WHO level, national level, or uh, uh, writing about all these problems, uh, whether it is related to consumers also. So will you start with the first and the most important question which coming in mind of most of us is a booster dose. Does this booster dose for all or for a select group of uh, uh, patients uh, during this COVID time? Because we know the, uh, the frequency with which the vaccination has been done, although uh, because of the number of people, number of uh, the huge population, so we, we still lacking as far as uh, targets are concerned, although we are second in world. But uh, does this booster dose concept is, 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 is uh, valid for Indians or it is applicable in Indian population and scenario? No, I mean, I'm sure uh, the booster dose, uh, what, um, whatever research has been done, and if science tells us that the uh, antibodies are dropping after a period of, uh, of time has elapsed, uh, after each individual has completed their first two jabs, uh, it is possible that a booster dose would become necessary. But I'm getting the impression that as far as India is concerned, maybe we are uh, beginning to, I, I mean, it's all right for government to make arrangements for the booster dose. It's all right for the scientists and medical fraternity to ensure that uh, the booster dose, uh, I mean, whatever vaccines are coming in are, um, you know, a continuation of the vaccines that have gone on you know, previously. At the same time, I do believe that we should not uh, confuse the lay public because at the moment, probably um, it's a tad early for India. Uh, those of us who have completed our two vaccines and uh, we find our antibodies dropping, there may be need for medical intervention. But other than that, I think it's much more important to complete um, every, that, that everybody should be administered two jabs of the initial vaccine. Or should we give it to uh, the high-risk professionals first uh, and the immunocompromised people or should we give it but for I'm all? Sure. Well, like first, we should well, at least sure give one vaccination to all. Depending on medical advice, I mean, I'm sure that, uh, uh, they, you know, depending on medical advice as to uh, what antigens are at work, what antibody, what is the level of antibodies in, in, in people who have already taken two jabs. Uh, and I think it will have to be tailored. Uh, according to need. Dr. Shazang, would you comment on this, the, how this booster dose is going to help in increasing antibodies for COVID-19? Should we give it to all or what is the FDA status regarding its recommendation present? You are mute. Uh, can you unmute, unmute yourself? Let me be very transparent and clear. As Madam has actually said, it needs to be tailored. Yeah. And the first thing is that there is no recommendation for an additional booster after two months. Whether it is for government of India or whether it is for United States government or anywhere. From a science standpoint, the only place there may be a potential for an additional dose after two months would be in people who are immunocompromised. So, properly, moderately to severely immunocompromised individuals who have diseases where their immunity is moderately or severely compromised. They are the only individuals which may become which may become eligible for an additional dose. In absence of that, there is currently no rationale for giving an additional dose. Right now, we need to understand three things. People who have already got the natural infection and have taken one vaccine or two vaccines are sufficiently protected for a year, year and a half. People who have not suffered from COVID but have taken two doses or one, two or three doses based on the vaccine they have taken, they will have some degree of protection. The degree of protection can be measured by antibodies, which is the B-cell response, but also remember we don't measure the T-cells. Yeah. Most ensure that we do not lose our lives as well as we do not get severe disease. Currently, we want to give the vaccines to most of the people most of the times. So public health practice is very clear that from a public health standpoint right now, no. an additional dose is not recommended with the exception of people who are moderately or severely with the company. <laughs> there, will be, there may be a compelling reason for healthcare professionals and frontline workers to probably get an additional course, particularly if they are falling in the category of moderately 
to severely immunocompromised status. That is why I agree with ma'am that this may have to be individually tailored. But currently, there is no such recommendation till we have not completed our first cycle of the vaccination schedule. So that's where the first we should vaccinate maximum po population and then only we go uh, and, and wait for any uh, uh, full-fledged policy coming from government or from FDA or uh, some WHO recommendations. Uh, another important question which has been uh, actually now addressed also, the, is, is it safe to get vaccinated against COVID-19 during pregnancy? Is there any, any special suggestion in the, uh, can give in the first trimester also, or we have to wait for, uh, for initial uh, first trimester to go off and then uh, uh, we give, or at any stage we can give it safely? Or any, any specific vaccination, because we have so many varieties of vaccinations, uh, would you recommend? Uh, whether you would like to have some non-replicating type or some nucleotide or RNA-based, which vaccination is relatively safe and can be given? Yeah, you know, is that for me? Yes. Vaccination uh, in pregnancy, ma'am. Yes, yes. Well, um, from the literature and uh, from the um, advice of the medical fraternity uh, across the globe, it does appear that vaccines are safe during pregnancy. However, I, I, I do not know if the uh, level of research is, um, is uh, sufficient um, you know, if one had one's own daughter or daughter-in-law pregnant, one, I mean, one would hesitate till one is fully assured by the medical fraternity. Um, and I would be happy if Dr. Uh, Shashank Joshi would, would uh, you know, um, would, would look into this question. Uh, but the thing is that, uh, you know, we have, shall we say, 27 million pregnancies per annum in India. So, you know, that is definitely one very large segment of the population where whom we need to assure uh, that it would be sufficiently safe. And in other words, they may be intending to take the vaccine. Pregnant women may be wanting to take the vaccine for their own safety, for the baby's safety, but we have to convert their positive intentions into action. And we can only do this very frankly, I believe, and from my experience, if we are able to get this message across in 200 different local languages so that people are able to, to uh, hear about it, read about it, learn about it, accept it, process it, and then proceed to action. Uh, but the details about, um, you know, in all the, in, in all the, uh, commentary on vaccines for pregnant women. I have my, personally not come across any very detailed research in this matter. Uh, it is definitely loosely said uh, over the electronic media as well as over the print media uh, that yes, this is safe. But I'm not very, very sure that you know how it would uh, react upon the fetus and upon the uh, you know growing pregnancy in a woman. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Shashank, would you like to comment on this? It's a very important yes, topic. So I would agree with Madam completely here. Uh, number one, uh, all COVID vaccines in the non-pregnant space are also emergency use authorization as far as the yes. Indian government is concerned. Exactly, yes. yes. So remember one thing that these are all experimental vaccines. Yeah. We are recommending currently, Government of India has recommended as an exception for mm -hmm. breastfeeding mothers as well as pregnant women vaccination. We feel Covaxin may be a safer option yes. because it's a killed vaccine. But beyond that, everything is in the zone of EUA, Emergency yeah. Use Authorization. So on a case-to-case -case basis, yeah. the obstetrician and the mother have to take a call on the same. We would recommend in general, and Government of India also has recommended in general, to vaccinate pregnant women. And that is a standard of care. Having said that, this is, the, as Madam rightfully said, the effects on the fetus and the mother are unknown. This is a subject matter of investigation and everything is right now in the EUA space. Globally also, if you see all the global guidelines, they say that it is a maybe or preferable, but it is not something which is a routine standard of care.
Thank you very much. So we should, uh, presently we should not hesitate. I think it has been recommended and, and we have been using in our patients also. So another important question, uh, do these existing vaccines protect people from Delta variant of SARS-CoV-2? Uh, Dr. Shashank would like to comment on this very sensitive topic and say very, very, I think. I think there is nothing sensitive about the topic. <laughs> when the vaccines were discovered, there was no Delta variant. Mm -hmm. Having said that, both the vaccines which are predominantly being used in India, namely Covishield and Covaxin, have data on, co uh, on the Delta variant that they are reasonably effective. But remember, all vaccines will have some degree of immune escape. And therefore, this is something which we need to recognize that as the vaccines are being developed, the virus will keep mutating and we will have to do the second generation innovations on the same. So when the next generation Covaxin and Covishield will come, it will be reasonably effective. But currently, the data suggests that most of the currently available vaccines in India have some degree of protection against the Delta variant. And the current degree of protection is two-thirds. So a rough estimate is two-thirds. So we will not have that 90%, 95% coverage. And again, remember, all this data is against severe disease and death. So remember that most of the vaccine data is not on overall efficacy. Vaccines don't prevent COVID infection but they prevent death and they prevent severe disease in almost 100% of the cases. Occasional immune escape can occur, will occur, and we should be recognized. And therefore, even after two vaccinations, our recommendation is to continue wearing masks because against all variants, mask is 100% effective. If you appropriately wear it, most of the times, most of the places. So very, very important. It's, uh, every vaccine is effective, uh, but there could be... I think it is very, very important. They, they are protective and the severity especially, they will bring down the... Madam, you would like to comment on this uh, uh, regarding the efficacy in Delta? Is some anything uh, you would like to add to it? No, no, I, I, I don't think I, um, I can add to what uh, Dr. Shashank Joshi has said. Uh, and I fully agree with, uh, with his perspective on this matter. Uh, there's another uh, important question, Dr. Shashank, I'd like to start from you. Is second mRNA vaccine dose safe even after an allergic, allergic response to first dose? It has been uh, raised at many times that this M second mRNA vaccine uh, dose, uh, should we take it or don't take it after first dose allergic reaction? So currently we don't have any mRNA vaccine available in India. No. Though the DPG has approved the, uh, the Moderna vaccine because of the cold chain issues. And if you're allergic to a particular vaccine in the first dose, I would not give it for the second dose. I will use another alternative vaccine. I'm very categorical and clear about it. I will do a CBC, CRP, IG, ask an allergy expert to clear it, have a team ready for a potential allergic reaction. Because allergic reactions, which are major, like angioneurotic edema or anaphylactic shock, clearly are a contraindication for a vaccination. However, if the allergic reaction is a mild one, like a rash or simple itching or a urticaria, then probably I will have a team ready and give the vaccination. And I will tell the person who's likely to get vaccinated to come as the first person to get vaccinated and keep the person under my eyes and observation for four hours at least. So this is a standard protocol where yeah. you need to ensure that there is a team response which is available for us. But remember that if you have allergy to the first dose of mRNA vaccine, which is predominantly used in global countries like US and Europe, there is, I would not give the second dose. I would probably do a mix and match. So general principle, you have to apply. Be careful. If it's a mild allergic reaction, you can, with caution, you can give. But it's a significant reaction. You have to, uh, I think, modify. You have to change it. Uh, so I don't like the word mild. Either the, the reaction is life-threatening or non-life-threatening. If it is yeah. a life-threatening reaction, the answer is no. If it is non-life-threatening reaction, then you need to do it under an expert observatory team. Dr. Shoshi, there is another uh, perception among people that if there are no side effects with two doses of COVID-19 vaccine, uh, you are not properly protected. So, so they, some people have some kind uh, of, uh, uh, I think, conception, concept their mind that if you take vaccine, then you That's are supposed to have some kind of uh, uh, reactions. That's a complete myth. And yeah. uh, take yeah. that myth out of your mind. Ma'am, you would like to comment on this? Uh, this yes, uh, yes, yes, I would. Uh, it is definitely a complete myth and I would say almost, you know, fictitious. However, I do, uh, I do wish to add 
that uh, I am not surprised that these, these kinds of fictitious myths are prevalent and we know they are. Otherwise, we would not be talking about vaccine hesitancy this morning. The fact of the matter is that the onus is upon the state, whether it's the central government or the state government, to actually blow these myths up. You have to be able to reach virtually household levels and not with just one, uh, you know, uh, global mass campaign by something is being said in America and Russia and we hope you have heard about it and so therefore please come and take the vaccine. No, I'm sorry, it doesn't work like that. Ultimately, we have to convert into hesitant, we have to convert hesitancy into a more positive attitude and then we have to convert those positive attitudes into positive action. So these myths have to be written about in the local languages and people have to read about them and then they will be convinced that in fact they were being misguided. Well, there another question which is uh, I, uh, recently in limelight regarding a mixing vaccine. There is a cocktail of vaccines. So what is your say on this uh, because it has been the topic of discussion at all forums. Uh, in the, even the many countries they, they have approved also and they are practicing also. What is your uh, take on that? So let me be very categorical on this. No country has approved mix and match, number one. Number two, this is a research mode. So the heterologous mixing may improve overall immunity and antibody response, but no country has improved mixing and matching. It is based on the need and the ask. So if the need and the ask is there is a mismatch, and if there is a supply issue, then some countries like Spain and United Kingdom have used a mix and match strategy based on the waves which came in using public health strategy and the yardsticks. And they have done some research on it. Currently, no country recommends mixing and matching in any form. That's number one. And number two, Indian government ha is doing currently some ongoing study on mix and match strategy. But it is purely the realm of public health to decide a mix and match strategy. Currently, no FDA on planet Earth approves any mix and match strategy. It is in the research realm and research zone. Well. Yes, thank you. Mr. Datta, I would like to uh, ask you a, a question regarding herd immunity. Is this uh, a Delta variant of uh, SARS-CoV made this uh, very difficult for us uh, to achieve this target of herd immunity? So it will be difficult actually in the, uh, the process of getting herd immunity. Well, let's, uh, uh, let us divorce the two issues. One is herd immunity per se, and the other is the Delta variant. I don't, don't know that we need to link the two issues. We are looking for herd immunity and uh, the research indicates that anywhere between 65% and 75% of, uh, of the population covered uh, should uh, enable a country to move towards herd immunity. For a country like India, I'm sure it should be 80%. Uh, so that is the first thing. The second thing is that what constitutes herd immunity is when we believe that the sufficient number of people uh, of individual entities in the population have been protected and have been adequately pro protected and therefore the the uh, probability of quick transmission um, is significantly reduced now therefore for herd immunity we need to focus on getting our jabs, uh, you know, double jabs through for every eligible individual across the country. And, and for that, we need to, uh, you know, simply to say bombastic things. We are uh, moving the fastest in the world. We have covered the mostest in the world. All these things don't help. We have actually to get down to work and actually to prepare a very nuanced um, as I have been stressing from the beginning, a very nuanced and locally targeted campaign. It could be district level, state level certainly, then it could be district levels. And even within districts, there are, you know, 45% uh, people who have no problem at all. They are very willing to take the vaccination. But there may be, well, maybe another, two, uh, you know, plus another 22%. But then there, there's still, uh, you know, 18 to 20% population uh, which is uh, in two minds. We need to reach them with comprehensive messages, with cogent messages, with messages which they can understand in their own language and they can relate to. Uh, 
and uh, the other thing is that you know uh, in every um, community in every uh, subdivision of this country in every district people develop faith uh, faith in role models in you know though a, in you know influential uh, voices it need not only be a celebrity all the time uh, it, uh, celebrities will complement the work done by the uh, the you know foot soldiers and the and who are your foot soldiers your foot soldiers are the health workers the immediate you know the doctors immediately available the nurses and midwives immediately available so unless these people uh, unless the nurses and midwives and foot soldiers are convinced how can they convince uh, people uh, you know living in remote hamlets so talking of herd immunity we need to prioritize segments of the population that continue to um, evince vaccine you know hesitancy and we need to reach out to them and i don't think that the delta variant has anything to do with this is you know in any significant manner dr shishan would like to uh, comment on that you want to some add to it dr shishan yes, please off now will wait for him or should uh ma'am and another thing uh, uh, the shall we use the doses of vaccine as booster dose when the uh, uh, it's it's a very rightly actually raised point when the vast majority of people in poor country are yet to be receive the first vaccine uh, uh, should like because you're lo looking at the lot of social aspects also and different aspects so we have to wait uh, for booster dose or for that matter modifying modifying a present schedule of vaccination first we have to give it to everyone in our country also and the other poor countries also i think what is your take on that because you have been looking after all the social aspects also okay let me let me say let me begin uh, in a somewhat different manner a different uh, at least from the way you put the question if i may the first and foremost thing is that uh, vaccine acceptance or vaccine hesitancy is a global phenomenon okay that's something which we need to get used to it's nothing to do only with india it is happening everywhere else in the world and if i may uh, share a couple of you know statistics with you uh, in uh, but, but even the, even that is like you know a shifting goal post because in december 2020 a survey was done of 11 uh, you know oecd countries and they found that the willingness to take the vaccine in december 2020 uh, was only 66% in february 2021 in these very same countries among this very same survey and population <clears throat> the uh, willingness to take the vaccine has jumped from 66% to 76% that's one thing so the yeah so so the question is you you brought in the question of countries in some countries um let me refer to russia and the united states where for example you know it is being felt now that the politicization of this specific covid-19 pandemic uh, uh, you know pandemic and uh, of the vaccine development has actually played a role possibly in lower vaccine acceptance rates in india the vaccine hesitancy is being touted as as high as 70% plus but the most curious case in india is that of tamil nadu a state like tamil nadu which is highly educated and high literacy i mean a vac vaccine um, you know hesitancy uh, in the age groups of 45 to 59 years in a government survey uh, is uh, over 18% it's 18.2% which is quite amazing but to talk about uh, 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 to talk about how this affects policy there are much higher vaccine acceptance rates surprisingly in the lower and middle income countries than in the wealthy countries and therefore global vaccine distribution so far which is uh, skewed heavily to in favor of the uh, higher income countries 
now needs to be prioritized for low and middle income countries for the simple reason apart from anything else the numbers here are much higher the vaccine acceptance is much higher and this will be is justified not only on a health equity or vaccine equity grounds but also it will provide much higher marginal returns on maximizing global coverage faster thank you so any question from audience you want uh, so they can i can ask the expert so if no question yes yeah Okay. Mm -hmm. There is a question raised from audience. Uh, if patient who is vaccinated, he received two doses of vaccine, but there are no, yes. no significant antibody detected. Huh. Uh, so uh, what if patient received two doses of vaccine, but still no yes. significant antibodies are uh, detected, uh, what should huh. be the, how, how should we interpret? No, no, I am sure he will get medical advice. And maybe sometimes the antibodies take time to develop. It individuals from it differs from individual to individual, and I am sure that medical advice will be provided. Uh, could uh, uh, would would Dr. Joshi like to take that question? He's, he's offline. So the the, the normal take on the, uh, is there. Uh, normally. Uh, we, we don't measure antibodies after vaccination. It is not yes. recommended also. And it has got yes. no very, sig uh, I think, uh, 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 practical significance uh, that mm -hmm. you take another dose of, uh, or third dose of the same vaccine if your mm -hmm. antibody is not significantly detected. So this mm -hmm. has, been, uh, uh, has been a practice also. Yeah, it is. It is yeah, so, so normally not recommended. Actually, there are no clear-cut recommendation on that where you go for another dose or change the vaccine. Yes. Uh, it is. So, so, that, so th that is one way, actually. You are creating immunity through uh, T-cells also, what he said. There's a sense transition yeah. also. So you not all the time you get antibodies, actually. You get... Uh, sensitivity. Even uh, so many patients we see they, who have been exposed to uh, COVID, do they suffered significant? Uh, they still uh, antibodies are not uh, detected. So for that matter, uh, even the what they say then the efficacy of the vaccine. So uh, some, sometimes there's 67 percent, 80 percent, 88 percent. But for severity of illness, it is 100 percent for almost every vaccine. So yes. they reduce severity also. You have got uh, uh, T cell immunity also. So you have got sensitization for that matter against the severity also. Yeah. So I think it is one of the, uh, I think, less answered questions, uh, how mm -hmm. to deal with the antibodies level. And it is not clear. So, but take on that, it will not modify your, uh, I think, uh, uh, present vaccination schedule also. So yeah. thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much for, for your time and your expertise. Uh, and, uh, sir, would like to... Uh, Thanks, Dr. Minakshi. Uh, Mrs. Thank Minakshi, you. for your expertise and, and, and uh, taking out your time uh, to answer our queries. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Minakshi Dutta Ghosh uh, and Dr. Sisan Zushi. I mean, basically, um, I think she's also offline. But I think, you know, these vaccines. Uh, everybody knows that, you know, vaccines uh, should be taken. But there are a lot of questions surrounding uh, vaccines. And just as, you know, there are a lot of questions surrounding COVID. And not many are able to answer those questions. I think the same can be said of the vaccines. It is only through experience that, you know, we will be able to learn more and more about uh, vaccines. Uh, and since, I mean, basically we are also confronting this Delta variant and now, you know, Delta plus variant as well. So it is only over a period of time, you know, we will know whether we have reached uh, herd immunity, 
whether with Delta variant herd immunity is possible, not possible, what, what kind of vaccines you know, may develop to deal with the Delta variant uh, COVID. So I think, you know, we will have to keep, you know, our anxieties on hold for some time. And whatever is available now, you know, we have to uh, use it to protect ourselves from COVID.